Hello, Piccadilly Knight here and welcome to this video. Uh, and this is going to be on the Doncaster retro gaming market, um, which was the 29th of June 2019. Now, um, from time to time during this video, you may well hear a bell. Uh, that's not a fire alarm or anything. It is a cat that seems to be chasing a moth over there. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just try and ignore it. If anything funny happens, then you know so be it i can edit it out well i haven't actually got any footage of the retro game market it, it, itself um i didn't take any uh <laughs> is the reason behind that um now i have looked on some other videos on youtube to see if i appeared in them of course you're going to aren't you um but i couldn't see myself so you know if anyone spots me there um then i, I don't know put a comment or, or something or, or, or link or whatever um, or um, hmm. so basically what I'm going to go into is there I'm, I'm going to sort of just do the pickups right at the very end so if that's the bit that you're actually interested in seeing um, and I warn you there's not many of them uh, then you can go to a time code that I'm going to put here so you can go to that time in the video and that's when the pickups will start um and then yeah so so you so you're gonna miss this this first bit um but yeah it was quite good uh is all i'll say now what what we decided to do um is basically i mean doncaster is slightly too far away to go for a day trip uh from where i am so what we decided to do basically was make a weekend of it um, and went up there on the Friday, got there on the Friday early evening uh, and came back on the Monday, just did it as a long weekend um, and stayed in the Holiday Inn up there and it was very, very nice. If, if you are going to stay in Doncaster, that is one place I recommend is the Holiday Inn Express. Um, now, they haven't, they haven't paid me for this, I'm just saying it was it was really, really good. Couldn't fault any of it at all. Um, and there's a pub right across the road as well. So, you know, if you fancy a big giant carvery uh, for not very much money, uh, that's that's definitely the place to go. I forget, forget the name of it, uh, the wood woodman's arms or something like that um anyway if if you know doncaster it's, it's near the big morrison's out uh, um somewhere farm um uh, so you know if you know if you know the area you might know where it is but anyway um so stayed there on the friday went down to the uh games event on the saturday uh and we had we did have early bird tickets. Uh, they were four pound something each. I forget. It, it, it was about eight, eight, eight something for the for the pair of us. Um, so, but when we got there, and and this was the thing. Bearing in mind that 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 Saturday was pretty much the hottest day of the year so far. I think in some places it got into the sort of mid to high 30s. So um, not quite where we are. I think maybe we got to 36, something like that. I wasn't really paying attention. But it was the hottest day of the year so far. Um, starting at 11 o'clock. So we got there, parked up at the Dome. Uh, at Doncaster Dome, on uh, uh, got there about 20 to 11, doors open at 11 for early birds, 12 o'clock for the plebs, um, and looked at the queue, and it was already a couple of hundred yards long. Um, it, 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 it was basically sprawling out from where the entrance to the, the, the area was, right the way around where they're doing this i don't know what they're building something there i don't know what um but where the sort of metal fences are and things like that and it was right the way around pretty much getting towards the car park so they thought ah well sod that basically i'm not I'm not standing there for 25 minutes in the baking sun we'll nip round the front and get a coffee so we did that and then basically waited for the queue to die down so by the time i actually got in there it was probably about 20 past 25 past 11. um so basically doors open at 11, we watched the queue thin out a little bit and there was, you know, maybe a little queue, maybe like 30 people. So that's when we decided to join. And that's what happened there. Um, 
One thing I will say though, and this is advice to anyone that's going to this, um, and also people that were there on Saturday, um, games and soap are not mutually exclusive. Uh, now that, it probably applies to maybe 1 in 20, 1 in 25 people that were there, but those 1 in 25, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I know it was the hottest day of the year, um, but there was at least one or two of you, and if you see this, you will know who you are, that smelled like you hadn't seen a bar of soap in weeks. Honestly, you know you're going to be somewhere with a lot of people. You know there's going to be a lot of people within close proximity to you, rifling through boxes, not too far away from where your feet are going to be. Um, I don't know, maybe put on clean socks, just e even if you can't be bothered to go for a shower, wash your hair, whatever, put on a pair of clean socks, put on some clean clothes, at least, you know, just as a courtesy to the 95% that are there that have made a bit of an effort for the day, just do something about that smell. Because, um, and you will know who you are, you know exactly who I'm talking to, and some of you I'm sure do it deliberately. Um, Honestly, there's nothing worse than trying to rifle through a box of games on the floor and somebody with open-toed sandals that very clearly, you know, has got some sort of fungal stroke, stepping in dog issue, um, you know, sort it out. You know who you are. But that was literally the only thing that took the shine off the day, apart from one other thing which I will mention when I get to the pickups. Um, but that's partially my fault for not knowing uh, the proper price of things. Um, yeah, so just to explain, I think uh, even though the Doncaster event was quite busy, um, not, it didn't seem as busy as the London one that I went to last year, but then the London one was tiny in comparison. I mean, it was a very, compared to the size of the room that, that, that this was in in Doncaster, the, the London one was probably about half the size room. Um, so it, it seemed busier by comparison because you couldn't really move around very much. Um, whereas this one, you still couldn't move around very much, but you were in a room that was double the size of that, you know, maybe more. Um, so although it was quite well attended, I am I have found out since that there was apparently another big gaming fair uh, going on in Birmingham, I believe. Um, so a lot of the sellers that I was expecting to see here weren't presumably were at the other one or, or just didn't bother making a showing at all. Um, especially as it was on a Saturday. Now I'm given to understand that usually these things are on a Sunday afternoon, but Saturdays. <laughs> Saturday would seem like the best day to hold something like this, but if you're, you, you know, which is fine, if, if, if you're a single person that wants to go to one of these, then fine, and, and you know, I'm obviously not, but, you, you know, um, my girlfriend is quite understanding that this is my hobby, and we, and we had set it aside as a weekend away anyway, so that was fine, uh, but people with families, Honestly, Saturdays are not the best day to try and get them to do something because normally Saturdays are already earmarked for something else. Uh, just, just out of you know my own experience, I would say that if you want people with families to go to these sorts of things, and, and maybe you don't, um, but if you do, Saturdays are not your best day. You're probably better off doing it on a Sunday. Just saying to the organisers, uh, Sundays you'll probably get a better attendance uh, because you'll get the wife and the kids coming along. Um, and although there were a few kids, you know, and, and, and not to generalise, but I would say that most gamers that have the money to go to these sorts of things and can take the day out and will buy the high ticket items, most of them are in their sort of late 20s to, to mid 40s and mostly men. Um, not all. But that, that is obviously the crowd that you're playing for. So, yeah, probably probably better off holding these things on a Sunday, as I'm given to understand they always traditionally were. Uh, but this one was on a Saturday. Anyway, I ramble on. I ramble on and on and on. So, uh, 
Aside from that, there were some sellers uh, that I will mention when I do the pickups. Um, I have, I did grab a couple of cards. Um, some of them I will use again. At least one of them I won't, probably won't, tr will try not to have any dealings with at any point in the future because, uh, and I'll explain why. Um, and there was at least one where, I, you know, there was at least a couple of sellers, one that I bought from, um, that didn't have a shop. They were just selling off bits of their own collection. So, that, I mean, that's fine. That's, that's what these things are for. Um, but one of the major reasons for going to these things is not really to scout out the bargains, because you're not going to get that many bargains. But what, what you are going to do, which is the advantage, which I know you know, a, a collection pieces of, is you are going to get usually slightly rarer stuff. Um, if you're in the market for specific hardware, you're more than likely to find it here than anywhere else. Um, and also, if you want to, if you want to basically deal with sellers later on, it's a good place to sort of pick up the cards, find out where the shop is, what sort of stuff they do. Um, which is good because at least one that I will probably use again and, and may well uh, ring at some point in the next couple of weeks because they've they've said they're getting some stuff in that I might be interested in. Um, anyway, so on to the pickups and it's nothing amazing but it is some stuff that I really wanted to knock off my list. Now, uh, I said in the previous video, I can't remember which one, it might have been the pickups one, it might have been the one before, that that I was going to this event and that I, there might be some um, specific things that I had my eye on. Now one or two that I have actually managed to cross off my list um, but the stuff, I, I mean some of the stuff that I was looking for I was holding out hope that somebody would be selling it but I didn't see it um, and if it didn't look the part, if the place didn't look the part I didn't see much point in asking for it um, so one of the things I was looking for was a Super Game Boy 2, didn't get one. Uh, one of the... I, I was looking for the guy who does the the card mods in Saturns and Dreamcasts, um, or it, it, I think it's a couple of guys, uh, and I can't remember the name of the company. I'm sure if I if I look back on my notes from, from the London one, I'm sure they were there. Um, because I might be interested in getting one of them. Didn't see any. Don't think I saw any modded consoles. I saw. I'm. I'm sure I saw one or two controller recases. So like you know an N64 controller with like a coloured top and a grey bottom. I mean that's not that uncommon. I saw a few of them. I'm pretty sure. Um, but as for modded consoles and things like that, aside from the. I can't remember what they are called. Ro Naughty Robot or Bad Robot. No, Bad Robots, a production company, um, that do the modded Game Boys that, with the LCD screens. They were definitely there because um, I picked up one of their cards as well. Um, but I, I, the magazine guy, I don't know where he was. The guy that does the sort of Super Play style magazines. Um, uh, what are they called? Like RP, RPG Play or RPG Gamer? I, I mean, I was I, he wasn't there. Uh, I can only assume he went to the Birmingham one, um, but I was I was interested in having a look at, at some of the stuff he was doing. But um, oh well, alas. Um, but I'm given to understand he's quite popular now, anyway. So it doesn't matter. I'll I'll, I'll bump into him eventually. Um, but yeah, so the pickups. Now I've got these in order of uh, <coughs> where where I got them from. So, the first place I I actually bought anything was, um, well, I, I've got it written down here as Allen's, uh, and you may you may know him if you've seen him before at these events, apparently he's another popular guy, a uh, Scottish fella named Allen, I'm sure his shop's called Allen something, um, and does an awful lot of Japanese stuff. So, I will just show you what I got from him first um, and then I'll talk about it for a little bit. Um, so I got Dungeon Explorer for the PC Engine um, and this has even got the little yellow sponge in it. Uh, although like I've said before with these games the, the little plastic 
wallet thing has, has obviously stickied itself up over time, uh, which is not unusual. Um, so that, that, that could do with a clean, but otherwise this is in really good nick. And as you can see from the sticker on the box here, I paid £16 for it. Um, which is probably is just below going rate, um, to be perfectly frank. Um, and I am, you know, reluctantly getting into sort of PC engine now. So that that was that was a good thing to get. No, he had loads of Hue card games there. I have to say, um, but the trouble is with with especially with the Japanese stuff is if you don't know what you're looking at. You know, I, I could have I could have probably came away with quite a few handfuls of cheap games off him, but I wasn't the best prepared. Entirely my fault. Um, and if you don't know what you're looking at, you, I could end I could have ended up buying a, an armful of RPGs, getting them home, and then not being able to play any of them um, because I couldn't understand a word of it. So I tried to pick up stuff that I knew what it was. Um, and of course that, that put me in a bit of a, that did put me in a bit of a trap because the other one that I picked up from him uh, for the PC engine was Necromancer. And I, um, I didn't have the list in my hand uh, as I was rifling through and I thought, oh, that looks interesting. Um, I'll get that. And then when I checked my list later on, I found out I already had it, but, I only paid a fiver for it, um, which is probably about half what it normally goes for on eBay. So if it comes to it, and again, sticky pouch, um, if it comes to it, I will probably um, just just throw this on eBay um, and see what happens because uh, I've I've already got it. But I did only pay a fiver, so I'm not I'm not too fussed. And I had it in my head for some reason that this was Alien Crush Pinball. I don't know why. I mean, I know, I know it's not because I know what the Japanese cover to that looks like. But I saw, you know, the thing, and I thought, oh yeah, that would be what that is. And just wasn't thinking. It was a bit busy at his stall anyway. Um, I was, I was trying to rifle through a box of PC Engine stuff while other people were basically waiting to get rifling through the box. You know, it was I was a bit under pressure, um, so I basically picked up these two discs and then went away because he was really busy at that point, um, and and then came back a bit later. Although one thing he did have there, which I was really interested in, uh, was a PC Engine Avenue Pad Six, um, which is the basically the well, it's basically the Street Fighter controller. I mean, that's that's what it works with. Um, now I do I do need to get another one of them because I've got one. I'm obviously Street Fighter's best played two player. Um, but he, he 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 had a boxed one there which he wanted fifty quid for, which I I mean I, I it, when he told me the price I said I said well to be honest mate that's not unreasonable. Uh, but my thoughts on it is I don't mind a loose one. I will probably pay 35 to 40 for a loose one. Um, so basically I can't justify at 50 pounds, bearing in mind what I want to pay for it, I can't justify having a 10 to 15 pound cardboard box for a controller. Um, I, I just couldn't, it, it's, it's not like a game box where it's a thing that keeps the game sort of safe and you know, nice on a show. A controller is something that is going to get manky when you use it. I mean, that's just, the, that, is, that is the nature of, of human skin. It gets things dirty and greasy, whether you like it or not. Um, I can't justify a £15 box for a controller, or 10 to £15 box for a controller. So I didn't buy it, but um, he says he's getting some more PC Engine stuff in in the next couple of weeks, so I've got his card. I may well ring up his shop um, and speak to Scottish Alan, as I'm going to call him. Um, and, and presumably when I say that, people that go to these sorts of events more regularly than I already know who I'm talking about. Um, and, and see if I can, you know, because I, I do need to get a couple more 
standard PC engine controllers. I, I do want an Avenue 6. You know, maybe if he does get some stuff in, I can work out a, a, a you know, a deal including postage or something. I don't know. I don't know how amenable the guy is. I, you know, I've only spoken to him briefly for all of two minutes uh, on, on Saturday. But, you know, anyway. So when I went back to his store later, I went and rifled through a lot of the controllers that he had there. There was one that did catch my eye, but I thought, when am I ever going to get round to using it? And it was um, the Super Nintendo Commander controller. Um, now, I, I was after a, a, ideally, I was after a Super Game Boy Commander controller. Um, or was it the Commander or was it the Fight Pad? Might have been, no, I think it was the Commander controller. That, that's what it was. And that was sitting there, and I did think about it, and then I thought, no, I don't. I really don't need one. It's not exactly the one I'm after. And if I'm going to spend some money on controllers, I'm I'm really going to want one that I'm going to use. Uh, not I, controllers. I don't really see as a collector's piece. Like it. I mean, lots of people have like boxed NES advantages and Super NES advantages, and and. Uh, Sega Mega Drive six button arcade sticks and and they're in the box and things like that and it's like well I don't I just don't see the point in box controller if I buy a controller it's because I want to use that controller it's like the reason for for, for going looking for a Super Game Boy Commander is because I want to use the controller to play using a Super Game Boy I don't I'm, I don't want it as a collection piece um, I mean that said it depends what it is I mean if a if an Amstrad branded Mega Drive pad fell into my lap for the right money, that would be a collector's piece. Um, but other than that, I, I just don't see the point. Anyway, I rifled through his Super Famicom games and he had Donkey Kong Country for a fiver. Um, this game on the right day on eBay is probably... On the right day, you can probably get it for a fiver. On the wrong day, you might pay eight to ten pounds, maybe slightly more for it. Um, if you factor in postage, I don't think you'll ever get this game for a fiver on eBay. So that's one off the list. Um, but I, I, yeah, I, I will play it more than likely. Um, which can't be said for all my Super Famicom games because a lot of them are. Uh, it turns out. <laughs> are, uh, RPGs and I can't play them, um, but I, I probably will get round to playing that because I it, it, I I borrowed the PAL cartridge off somebody years ago, and I never made it more than halfway through the game. I don't think um, so. One one of these days I will get round to playing it. Now on to the next pickup, which in order is from uh, it seemed to be somebody selling off. Um, their collection or bits of their collection it didn't seem to be like a proper trader I think this was a private seller effectively that had their had a booth set up and it was Gauntlet 4 now if you've been watching my recent videos that this this is one that was on my uh, to find list um, and but but regularly this game complete uh, and, and I haven't checked the CEX site in a long time, but certainly on eBay, this game complete is sort of 35, 40, 45 pounds, um, depending on buy it now or auction. It, it generally goes for that kind of money. Um, and I, as I was walking around the event, I kept seeing copies of this there, and it was 30 pounds, 30 pounds, 30 pounds. Um, I didn't see any loose, uh, but I didn't, to be fair, I didn't check too hard. Um, and there was even one that was priced up at 30 pounds. I mean, 30 pound boxed and complete, you could say, yeah, okay, that's fair. That's probably going right. Maybe just shy of going right, actually. Um, but there was one that was marked up at 30 pound, didn't, didn't have a manual. And the, the cartridge didn't look like it was in that good condition. I mean, it probably would have cleaned up, but it looked like it had some food stuck to it or something. And you just go, oh, mate, you know, if I was selling my games at an event like this, I, I might actually just spot clean them, you know, because I think, well, 
for the extra couple of quid I might make off it, it's probably worth doing. You know, just just as as, as a tip, if not not to people going to these events, but selling at these events, just give the games you're selling a little spot clean. You know, before especially if they're cartridge games, give them a little spot clean. You know, it doesn't take long, depending on how many games you're selling, obviously, but it doesn't take long. And even if you're only... Ch I mean, like like this, look, right? Now, this this is obviously, you know, this is a 25-year-old game coming up for, give or take. Um, and it's a Famicom game, a Super Famicom game, sorry, so it's not worth very much at all. You know, most of them aren't worth very much at all. And they, and they are just in shoe boxes on the floor or, or plastic shoe boxes on the floor uh, most of the time. But look at that. I mean, look, you wouldn't know. You know, Alan, again, i give him a shout out. There's, no, there's a little bit of grime on the side here, I'll grant you. But somebody's at least given this a one once over with a duster. You know, once in a while... The games have come out. Is give them a one over, one, once over with a duster and put them back in the box, which is fair enough. You know, you, you can't say fairer than that. Um, but anyway, getting to the point. Now this one was twenty five pounds. So let's let's just say that thirty pounds is the going rate. I think it's actually more than that. But but on the day, thirty pounds was the going rate for this game. Now this one seems to have been marked down to twenty five purely because it's missing a hang tag on the box. Um, but it is complete with the, with the manual. Um, and it, it's got a sticker in here, because it was originally from Games Exchange, it looks like. Well, not, not originally, because these will be uh, Games Exchange as a second-hand place anyway. Um, but yeah, and it's... I. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is the original case, but I'm guessing it is because it's a it's a Tengen game, so it's not, you know, although it's licensed, it's kind of they made their own sort of cases, didn't they, and things like that. Every every one of these big companies made their own cases for things. Um, but yeah, that's all that's wrong with it is it's missing the hang tag. It's perfectly fine other than that. Uh, well, I assume so. I haven't actually tested any of these yet. So that was one That was one that was knocked off my Mega Drive list. The other one I managed to knock off the list is the Otifants. Um Now this case has seen better days, it has to be said. It looks like somebody's really forcefully peeled a sticker off the front of there at some point in time. And you may notice that it's the Mega Drive Classics case um, rather than the original, uh, not the original, but the, the, the basically this one and the uh, and the the sort of original sort of Mega Drive black um, artwork. Um, now, for a game like the Otterfans, I don't know which variant of case is is rarer, um, and frankly, I don't care. Uh, because I've got it now, and I'm, you know, but but this is this is basically the one that showed up, and th this I probably paid the right price for, uh, which is ten pounds, from the Super Retro Bros, or Bros. dot co. dot uk store, um, and they're another one that I might have a closer look at, um, but I understand that might be easier in their case because they they're actually, I think they are just a website. I'm not sure if they've even got a store somewhere. I'll have to, to check. Um, but yeah, this is probably one of the last ones I had to knock off my list uh, for the Mega Drive. So I think one or two more games and then I'm pretty done with the Mega Drive. I've, I've got what I want. Um, no, my philosophy on that previous was, well, I will probably still get a um, what do you call them? an EverDrive um, cartridge, uh, just on the odd occasion that I might want to play something. I think I think the only other games that I still want is is a couple of the Micro Machines J-Carts with the built-in controller ports. Uh, I think Micro Machines Military I still want. Um, but other than that, then, uh, but, but the point is, I was, I was thinking, well, I'll probably just get an EverDrive then, uh, just in case I want to play something you know, maybe I want to play 
cyberball or something uh, just occasionally or, or, or one of the NHL PA hockey games that I, I don't have. Um, oh, Sensible World of Soccer is one that I was still looking for. And although I did see it there, I thought it was very, very overpriced. Now, I understand that game is going up. So that's if, they, if you've got a spare one in your collection... Um, Maybe wait a couple of weeks and then see where the price hits because that is one that seems to be going up is sensible world of soccer. Um, but anyway, I, I'm getting off point. The point is, I was thinking about getting an EverDrive, but now that that Mega SG, not Mega SG, is it Mega SG? Mega SD has just been released by Terror Onion. I know it's very expensive, but I might just get one of them instead. I'm, I mean, I'm thinking about it. I'm seriously thinking about it. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. Nothing to do with Doncaster. Um, so now we come to uh, the last two things, and these are from Console Passion. Um, and I'm a bit annoyed actually, but I'm I'm probably more annoyed with myself than I am with them um, because I think I paid. I, well, I don't think. I know I paid too much for definitely one of the things. Um, because I didn't... Well, A, because I haven't really been following the prices all that much on uh, handheld games. Because uh, it's not really my thing. There are stuff that I want, um, but normally it's stuff that's exclusive to handhelds, not anything, you know. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be interested in having, say, Mario Kart DS... Um, although I, I do have Mario Kart DS, bad example. Um, but I wouldn't go looking for it because there's already better versions of Mario Kart on something else. Whereas stuff that is console exclusive to handhelds, I, t I tend to sort of go for if I've got to buy handheld games. Um, and one of these I'll just start off with, the, the one that I'm really annoyed that I paid the money I did for it, is uh, Pac-Man and Gallagher Dimensions. Now, I paid... £24 for this, and before you start laughing, this is again, maybe a failing on, on, in fact, probably a failing on my part for not keeping an eye on the price of these things, um, but also I was under the impression that this was basically in, in mint condition, um, and, it, and it just isn't. Uh, although everything is here, there is some definite damage to the box. Um, which I'm not pleased about. Uh, it's, I don't know if you can see it there. Right, so there's damage up here, um, and there's damage at the back as well. Um, so I, I'm not I'm not entirely happy with that. So I, I think I've overpaid for this game, even if it was pretty much in mint condition. Um, and, and B, I've definitely overpaid because of the damage that's on the box. And I, I, I didn't realise that was there because it was in a baggie. Uh, so there was no there was no sort of opportunity to, to sort of open the case and, and have a proper look. Um, but it was the only... They were the only people that I saw a copy of it. This, this is one that I was after. And they were the only people that had it, uh, as far as I'm aware. I, cer I, I certainly didn't see another one. Or I would have probably snapped it up because I, I got this quite late in the day. Um, now, to be fair to Console Passion, uh, I did look through their PC Engine stuff and there was a couple of things that I really, really did consider buying. Um, one of which was Space Invaders, which they had, I think, for £18. Um, but... Had I not been on eBay two days previous and saw that there was at least one buy it now for £18, I, I probably would have picked that up there. Um, which, yeah, I, I may have missed out on that, but I, but I didn't. I, I didn't buy it. Um, and they had Fantasy Zone as well, which I think was 22 I want to say. But I decided in the end to buy the Pac-Man um, and Gallagher dimensions and then i bought kid icarus uprising now again i paid 24 pounds for this but the difference between this one and that one is this one is entirely complete 
Um, it has the stand, it has the, the pack of cards unopened, there's like six, um, well, I mean, I suppose they call them collector's cards, but I don't, I don't know if there's any more than six. I, I certainly don't remember ever seeing them in a shop or anything. Um, but there's an un the unopened pack of cards is in here, the unopened stand, the games in here, uh, the Club Nintendo points are in here. It, basically, everything that that came with this game day, you know, brand new day one is in here. Even the little hang tag is still on the box. So. £24 for that I don't think is too bad. That is probably about going rate for one that has been quite heavily used, um, I would have said. Even if it comes with the stand, you know, it doesn't have the original bags and things like that. And big box stuff, you really do want the original bags and inserts and things if you can get them. Because otherwise, what's the point in having the big box version? You just have the normal one, wouldn't you? Um, so I think... I think I, I know this sort of thing is designed to collect. Now, I'm, I'm not an idiot. I do know that. But I think if you are going to buy something that's in the big box version, you, you do want it basically as it was, you know, new. Uh, which is why you'd probably just buy it new if you really, really wanted it. Um, but yeah, so I am a little bit annoyed with Console Passion for their pricing on this particular game. Um, but, again, am I really annoyed with them or am I really annoyed for myself for, like I say, A, not knowing the price of something which I should have known the price for, especially when it was on my list of stuff that I was looking out for that day. I should have researched it properly. Um, but the reason I'm annoyed with them is because of the damage on the box, uh, really, which... You know, if it was me selling something, basically, if I was selling this on eBay, and to avoid any confusion, and, and I've, I've said this time and time again, right, I would mention any damage. That that would be up front. If, it, you know, even though it's in a baggie, it's all stickered up with a price and all the rest of it, there would be a sticker on the baggie somewhere that said box damage or artwork damage or, or whatever it was. You know, even if it was, e even if it was like one of these little clips had broken, that would be mentioned somewhere. Okay, I sh I shouldn't have to, you know, tear open a baggie to, you know, it. I I assume if something is bagged up, it it is in a condition that that I would consider mint, or or as new. You know, if some if something is is baggied up, I would consider it an in in as mint. And I think, quite frankly, to do that and not put a sticker on the baggie saying box damage or whatever it is you have to put, um, you know, it would be like uh, I I mean this is this was from a pickups video a couple of years ago, I think, and and I mentioned about Cambridge CEX, um, and the guy in there. You know, I, I can't even remember what the game was. I think it was McDonald Land on the Mega Drive or something like that. Not not an expensive game, not a hard to find game, um, but it was bo it, it was basically in the in the display cabinet as sort of boxed complete. All right, fair enough. Um, and and the guy brought it down to the counter, and he was like, uh, you know, I, I I have mentioned this story before, but I will go through it again. And he sort of went to do it on the on the thing because they they have a little sticker that they scan and blah 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 reward card or whatever it is if you got your membership card um and he was all ready to stick it in a bag and i said well hang on a minute mate can i can i not look at it first you know and he was he was kind of hesitant and i thought oh hello here's alarm bells and i opened the thing and the cartridge looked like it had been it had, had a saw taken to the side of it i mean honestly the guy definitely knew that that's the condition it was in you know it, and it was just later on when i realized his little hesitation there this guy trying to sell me this cartridge definitely knew the condition it was in and was hoping i wouldn't notice till i'd got home or whatever and then just, just I, I don't know what he was hoping like i wouldn't bring it back or i wouldn't cause a fuss but it's just like it, it's that sort of thing it's like well, no sorry you're selling it you need to be up front 
you, you know this is a collector's market because everything is priced as if it is a collector's market. You know it is. You know condition matters. So at the end of the day, let us know. If you're selling it, it is your responsibility to let me know if there's anything wrong with it. Okay, It's not my responsibility to find out later and then have to do a YouTube video on it that nobody will ever see or pay attention to. But that is what's happening because... Like I say, I mean, maybe you can't even see it on the camera. I don't know. I'll try and sort of wiggle the case around so you can see. But, I mean, that plastic on the top here has been stretched to hell. Now, I probably could recase this, but the point is, why should I have to? Why should I have to go to the hassle of doing that? You should be up front if there's anything wrong with it. You know, I, I just think that is, is really, really bad form. And, it, you know... It, like I say, maybe the camera isn't picking it up, but my eye certainly is picking it up and, and probably should have done at the time. Um, that, that was just that. Um, so that's all my pickups and, and that's all I've got to say on the Doncaster uh, gaming market, games market 2019. Oh, June 2019. Um, but what I will say was I did have a blinding weekend. Uh made a full long weekend of it because like I say Doncaster's really too far to do there and back in a day so I made a full weekend of it went to York on the Sunday went to York Castle Museum uh, which if you've got a spare two or three hours I, 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 I thoroughly recommend um, it, it is quite interesting at the moment they've got they've got this this funny exhibit there at the moment which I think runs until March next year, of uh, uh, broken relationships. Um, and I won't spoil it for anyone that does go there, but it is quite the eye-opener, and there are some very, very surprising exhibits there. Um, but maybe don't take the children. Uh, you know, if you're an adult, go. If, if don't take the children. Some of it is quite fun. Some of it is depressing. Some of it is quite sad. So I recommend that. Um, but yeah, and and yeah, just all around had a lovely weekend. And will we do it again? Yes, we've already decided that we're going to do it next year again, and and go to the Doncaster Retro Games Market. Um, once they announced the dates, I did know that was the odd thing. They had announced, um, I can't remember what it was, but it was some odd dates that they had announced for next year. And I can't remember, I, I can't even remember what was odd about them. There was a big poster at the beginning. I might have to go and check on somebody else's video that got footage of the thing. But there was something odd, and I can't remember what it was I pointed out about it on the poster they had as you were going in but there was something odd about the dates and I can't remember what it was right now if I remember I might do a little addendum to this if I don't I might just put it in the description um, or alternatively go and look at somebody else's video and see if you can spot what it was there's a there's a poser for you but yeah we're gonna do it again next year um, but probably go for a week uh, you know actually get around Yorkshire for a little bit because it, it, it is a shame actually I didn't get to see much of because uh, I, I don't often go to Yorkshire I go through there well I used to go through there quite often but never really stopped in and been anywhere so uh, now that we know what's around there it might be fun to go for an entire week and make the games fair uh, games market part of it anyway I'm not going to ramble on any further I've already gone on too long so suffice it to say um, I was pleased about some things. I wasn't so pleased with other things, but I'm still glad I went. Um, and hopefully next time I go, I will take the opportunity to get some footage. Um, I probably will contact Scottish Allens Games or whatever they're called. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll probably put that in the description as well. Once I dig the cards out, I'll probably put the descriptions of everywhere I've talked about, whether I liked them or not, or, or everywhere that I've bought stuff off, I, I will say, because that's really the only way i got cards. Um, so I will put them down. Not as recommendations, just as information. Um, but Scottish Allens, Japanese games, 
Um, I will probably contact at some point in the future to see if he's got any PC Engine stuff I might be interested in. Uh, once I manage to, <laughs> once I manage to earn a bit of money, because um, that was one thing about this weekend. It has absolutely skinned me. What the the accommodation and that it pretty much blew my excess budget. Um, no, uh, the next video after this. Um, I've I've got an idea uh, of something that I want to do, uh, but don't feel the need to watch it if it's something you're not interested in. I won't give away what it might be, um, but don't feel the need to watch it if you're in any way easily upset. Um, uh, but if you have been if you have been watching my stuff for a while, it might be of interest to you. I don't know. But you'll just have to wait and see. Spoilers, um, etc., uh, which I'm not going to give. Um, but there's something, there's something that I do, I, I do want to to tackle. But it's a bit of a sad and emotive thing, um, so I, I won't say any more than that. But don't feel the need to watch the next video that pops up here or wherever it might pop up. You know, it's uh, um, anyway. So that'll be the next thing I'm doing, and then I am definitely, definitely back to uploading uh, the playthroughs and things like that after that. Um, it's just been a busy couple of weeks, and hopefully when I do the next video, you'll you'll realise why. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's all I've got to say. Oh, apart from PS, yes, bloody wash. Um... And if you don't know what that's in reference to, because you skipped ahead just for the pickups, then, you know, go back to the beginning. I'm not repeating myself. Um, so anyway, there will be a subscribe button here. Uh, there will be some other things you may like over here. I have been the Pickled Onion Knight, and I will hopefully see you in another video.